or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. Sometimes I press every button in here, but the right one. <laughs> this time I got it right. Greetings, good evening, how you doing? Going to 24 up till the top of the hour, live on a Sunday night. This is Beyond Ringside, live from the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Fast Eddie Lane, the Magic City Motor Mouth, your host and moderator for this festivity of, hmm, more F words than I could possibly say in two hours, or even an hour and a half maybe. Welcoming in tag team partners Mark Mabo Bowman. I was going to let you keep going. <laughs> we started carry we started the impersonations last week. We'll do karaoke this week. Welcoming in tag team partner the Wicked Nemesis. That was the creepy clown and everyone Penitent man builds before God and the creepy clown. And the creepy clown. Yeah, I know some people who've had more than enough of their share fare of creepy clowns lately, but I think that's a um, segment better discussed on late night cable TV. Did you say they have they've had enough of their share fare? Yeah, pretty much. So creepy clowns. I want to see Mabel in clown makeup. No, you don't. I really want. I, I really think this would go over. I really think it would. I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw out four words: miniature Eli the Killer Clown. That's technically five, but hey, what the hell? <laughs> and dude, I will say this to this day: I still have very fond memories of Harley Quinn. Oh, uh, uh, dude, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, that was that was a guy that I wish was was still around. Eli, cool as hell. Harley, she was a badass. That's all I'm gonna say. And oh, yeah. I and I do mean, damn. First off, Impact Wrestling. Amazingly enough, we're all remembering the fact that they have a pay per view coming up in an hour and twenty two minutes from right now. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to. We remembered it the day of the pay per view, but at least it's not like the opening of the show. Where we're like, oh, hey, Impact, look at that. You know, I've and, had... and by the way, when you get to it, I, I've got. Just, oof, mm. Yeah, I know it's a minor oversight. It's some ish that should not be, but oh, I'm gonna let you go. No, go ahead, break it out there. Well, I'm not gonna break it out there. Okay, but this. <laughs> why would somebody call me in the middle of a dead dumb radio show? Well, first why of all, I, let's give it the setup, Mabo. This is ish that okay. should not be. And now for ish we <laughs> should not see. Let's see. Here's some ish that should should not not be. be. We're so going to get sued by freaking Kevin Smith at this point. No, he's not. I I emailed Rath Garman this week. Oh, awesome. Um, But anyway, uh, okay, so we all know that Luke knew, you know, we know that Luke Gallows was revealed to be one of the members of Aces and Eights last week. And. And this is just a minor thing, and people would be like, why is he even going off about it? Well, let me tell you something, and I don't know why I'm going off on it. I don't even watch Sons of Anarchy, but this is just... It just is, uh, okay, first of all, for those who read the you know websites or whatever, um, Luke Gallows has been doing... You know, he would do dark matches or, uh, you know, tryouts or whatever for Impact, TNA, whatever they're called. Um, you know, try to get a spot on the roster, and apparently it worked. And he would go. He would. He would go by the name Isaiah Cash. Okay, not a bad name. Are we in agreement? No, not bad. Not a bad. Well, name. I'm against. Well, I'm against it because of Kid Cash being there. But other than that, yeah, if Kid Cash wasn't working for TNA slash Impact, I would have no problem with it. That's my own. Yes, and I mean that's maybe that's why they didn't do it. But um, you know, it's also the fact that you know it, it does sound like a decent you know gimmicky biker's name. Hey, wait a second! I have an idea. Ever since the situation with uh, Brock Hogan making her um, her his foray into TNA, and um, Tess Mocker having to drop her first name, why don't we go ahead and say, well, since Kid Cash is there, we could go ahead and call him Isaiah Miss. Mabo, continue. 
anyway, um, well, if if you saw Impact this 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 past Thursday night, they're sitting there, and Mr. Head of Aces and Eights, not really the he's not the head because obviously the head was you know some other mystery guy with his back to us, but. And, and by the way, did you guys notice that his mask is actually the, the xenomorph, the alien from Aliens? Mm-hmm. If you don't believe me, look at it. You yeah. can see the little mouth that pops out. Anyway, sorry. Um, God, I should have taken some red one or something today. But he sat there and he goes, they're, they're, you know, Devon and Mr. Alien Headman are berating him by, you know, you got your mask ripped off and blah, blah, blah. You're not even a patched-in member, so he's not an official member. But he's called the director of chaos. Yeah, I know. I love that. And then they call him Doc for a director of chaos. But Doc, okay, first of all, if you're not even an official patched in member, but you've been given the title of a director or something, that's like sitting there and calling somebody in basic, somebody who just signed up for, you know, a boot camp in the military, and, and going in and be like, hey, lieutenant. Yeah. What, 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 what the hell? What the hell? And I know it's just something minor, it's something nitpicky, but it's really it's the minor stuff. It's just the little nuances, the little splinters that get under my fingernail, and it just irritates me. It doesn't hurt. It just irritates me. It freaking just, and I'm like, you're stupid. Huh. You're stupid, and I hope you freaking get herpes in my freaking present pants. <laughs> Well, let me let me say let me say something about that, Mavo. Uh, Go ahead. I've said this before. You know, there's a lot of guys in the business that write their promos down, and then there's some of us that don't write ours down. A lot of times, you can tell those that don't write their promos down and those that can. And for the majority, I'm gonna say 95 percent of the people who don't write their promos down, Lord have mercy on my soul, they need to. Yeah. And that is case in point exactly there. If you write your, you will know. First of all, when I cut a promo. I go and I make sure that I go back and I watch everything that happens beforehand. You can't go out there and that's exactly what makes this business, that's what separates a worker from a wrestler. If you can't remember the storylines, then you probably need a manager to do it for you. Yep. Or you need to write your promos down. And that is a key example. But uh, but the question is, Mabo, and I asked you, Eddie, too, how many people you think actually picked up on that? Uh, probably, go ahead. I'm going to say not. I'm going to. I'm not going. I'm. I'm, I'm going to say not very many at all, because well, you know they 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 just look at the overall big picture. Yeah. But um, I just know that I'm you know probably waiting a couple weeks down the road when they reveal the rest of the members of Aces and Eights. You know, sleepy, dopey, Doc. Doc. Doc's already there. Doc's Eddie, already there. <laughs> Eddie, do you think that, that anybody <laughs> caught this? Because I did not see a single tweet about it. And you guys know, people rip TNA apart. On God, Twitter. yes. Um, see, I'm okay, here's the thing. I'm the one who has a penchant to not underestimate the intelligence of a person watching the shows. So I, my first guess would be one in five or one in eight. But with Wicked coming out, Wicked, with you coming out the fact that nobody's really tweeted about it, then that pretty much lets me know that a lot of people either slept it or just said, oh, crap, there goes Impact again. But see, here's the thing, and this is something that I want to go ahead and um, put on the table as it pertains to freaking Deacon or whatever. Doc, the director of Chaos, who's not even a patched-in member. How many times did he smack Sting with a freaking ball-peen hammer? Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay, look. I went and bought a watermelon, and I have a ball-peen hammer at the house, not quite the same size as the one that was used on Impact, and I smacked it broadside. I smacked the watermelon broadside with the ball-peen hammer. I did more than make a dent in that ball-peen hammer, I mean, in the uh, watermelon. Then I turned and used the rounded side, as was done to Sting on Thursday night on Impact. I did more than make a dent in that melon with that ball-peen hammer. Then I took the, the flat side, the blunt side, and I smacked another part of the watermelon. Ladies and gentlemen, by all laws of logic, Sting should be dead. Yep. Well, first of all, you better cut it out or you're going to get a, uh, a cease and desist from Gallagher. Keep smacking uh, water. Oh. No, no, no. I used a ball-peen hammer, not a sledgehammer. There's a big posing difference. Posing as his brother. Posing as his brother. Yeah, oh, really, Bruce just... Gallagher. Fast <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Gallagher. Fast Eddie Gallagher. That's look, but I mean, look, that, hey, look, look, I got to say this real quick. I am the first one who stood up out of my chair and applauded the first time I saw the factor of Geico, and I hate Geico, using oh, Gallagher yeah. as the um, happier than the Gallagher at a, at a farmer's market. 
That, to me, was classic. I'm glad to see Leo Gallagher getting paid. Wizard of Odd himself. Gallagher, love you, man. Wicked, go ahead. Well, let Mabo go, because I was going to... May, he may say exactly what I'm going to say. Mabo, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, that's got to be, you know, some kind of gimmick uh, ball-peen hammer, dude, because there's no way... Or just is no, there's no way that you know he could have been hit with that. You know, with it being a a you know regulation hammer or whatever. The last shot but, was to his head, dude. I know, and I know that's what I'm saying. But if you go back and listen, you can actually hear the smack a couple times. But but the question is, is who is it at fault here? Because I'm telling you right now, I'm six foot three, two hundred five pounds, uh, Festus slash uh, Luke Gallows. But uh, I, uh, Kit Cash's big brother is about six foot five, probably three hundred and five pounds, maybe three fifteen right now. Okay, yeah. one swing from from me better take you down because if I have to swing the mallet again, you're going to get it for real. Luke Gallows is my, and he did this to Sting. Now we saw Sting do this with his baseball bat against somebody when I forget who it was, but Jeff Hardy when he beat him all the way up the rafters and back down. It only takes one. Yep. That is another problem with TNA that goes against logic, and we see it all the time, guys. We see these guys that go out there as quote unquote managers who are really valets, and as these guys <coughs> that use weapons, they'll use it repeatedly. It should only take one time. Because I'm telling you right now, you hit somebody with a ball bat one time, they're going down. Yep. I've done it. Me too. Well, it's, all, well, it's also you know kind of like you just said, Rick, and it's kind of a callback to about a month or two ago when they had a. Uh, uh, Joseph Park, you know, Park Park and Park, um, Chris's brother. You, you know, know Abyss. Abyss. <laughs> um, when he when he got you know whacked in the in the head with the with the ball team hammer one time, and you know it was, it was a, oh god it was horrible. But uh, remember they whacked him on the top of the head one good time. Now the only uh, ripple, and I do agree, you know, with you though that. You know, one one good shot with a with a large ball peen hammer, and you know, you're not going to get back up. But they did start hitting him, like in the hand, and then the arms, and the legs, and the crotch, and the thing, and the anus, and all that stuff. And oh, they so say, they like, they yeah, like they limped him. They limbed him. They hit him. They hit his limbs. Oh, okay, yeah, they're trying to be like yeah. just like a biker gang. That's yeah. that's Eric Bischoff. That's Eric Bischoff written all over it. Yeah, well, like there I said, is. they didn't hit him in the side of the head till the last shot, and yeah. then they stopped. Oh, well, see, I thought that was the first shot. I'm sorry. No. TNA, I apologize. You're here. the only time you hear I apologize because what you are doing, and you're beating him down with the mouth, that is a biker game move. That That's called limbing somebody. So I, I do kind of agree with that if you are going to strictly stay with, like, a strictly biker game. But, you know, the, uh, torturing somebody. But a ball peen hammer... <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna hurt. No matter how many times they shot him, you know. Uh, yeah. I guess so. I guess that would be kudos to them on my behalf. Then, if they if they did do that, because I mean they were sticking strictly with what a biker gang does. Yeah, because a crowbar has been used, a sledgehammer has been used, a lead pipe has been used, a two by four has been used, brass knuckles has been used. Bully Ray still uses a chain. Um, I think it was Scott Steiner who had the lead pipe, iron pipe, steel pipe, yes. wind pipe, whatever. And, you know, Raven and Abyss have both used various objects over the run. So it's like, okay, what has not been used? What can we possibly use short of a Lego Millennium Falcon? Has anybody been hit with a car yet? Steve Austin. No, I'm talking about in TNA. TNA. Oh, the... Uh, Anybody no. relevant? <laughs> no, I don't no, think I so. Don't, no. I, I don't. mean, and that's what I always enjoy is the is 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 the <laughs> and not necessarily the car into the other car. Good hit and run. No, just, <laughs> yeah, but I know Joy's in good wrestling hit and run. You heard it right here, Beyond Ringside, November. What is this? Eleventh? Yes. Yeah. Two thousand twelve. Maybo Mark Bowman enjoys a good wrestling hit and run. Yeah, I do, and not and not just car on car. I'm talking about car on human. It, <laughs> or on him, I'm telling you. Uh, Chikara did it with Larry Sweeney, God rest his soul, and Eddie Kingston. Um, somebody did it. With, uh, FCW did it. I think it was. Uh, oh, snap. Oh, 
That's the, that's the one over top the four horsemen slamming Ronnie Garvin's head into the or was it Gar- Ronnie Garvin was it Ronnie Garvin or Barry Windham? They slammed the door on his hand. Barry Windham. Um, that was actually that was Larry Zabisco and Arn Anderson slammed the slammed his hand <laughs> uh, in the door. That's one. Barry Windham. Uh, I believe it was Barry Windham because that's where, or might have been. It was either Barry or Dustin because that's where they got. That's where the got the uh, got the nickname the Cruncher. And uh, of course, the infamous Horseman beat the hell out of Dusty one time up against the car, and I think they slammed his hand in the door too. Uh, Ronnie Garvin has had his hand assaulted before, and I also remember the time that Dusty came out after the Magnum TA situation when Tully yeah. apparently and then Dusty took a baseball bat thus the birth of the Midnight Rider which it's still never really been proven that Dusty Rhodes and the Midnight Rider are exactly the same person even after all these years I think and that's awesome that's nostalgia that right there is a legend because that is a you can always about it. look they never proved that that's old school thank you Eddie for pulling that up not a problem wait <laughs> wait so there was there was some doubt that Dusty was the Midnight Rider. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, dude, they played it off. That's one of the greatest storylines. One of the greatest people ever. ever. I, I was never any shadow of a doubt that they were two different people. Are you guys now... Yeah, they've actually... No, they've actually story? had Dusty Rhodes and the Midnight Rider side by side in the NWA before. Twice. Oh, okay. I was about to say, don't do that, because that's slowly tearing down my childhood. What the hell? What was great is they did it twice. That was what yeah. was good. Th- you, you can go one time. One time, oh, but when you do it twice... That is fantastic. We'll see the beautiful th- old school. That's right. Like. The beautiful thing about that is, you know, Dusty Rhodes had the Midnight Rider show up in Florida for Florida Championship Wrestling one time, or Championship Wrestling from Florida, and then lo and behold, they must have kept in good contact because during the situation in the National Wrestling Alliance Jim Crockett Promotions, the Midnight Rider stepped up again to defend Dusty Rhodes. So there was more than one Midnight Rider sighting. Over the years, there's. I mean, the Midnight Rider has definitely been a prevalent feature during the late seventies and eighties for at the side of and in behest of Dusty Rhodes. Do you think something like that could ever get over today? I know they've tried to do it with with Abyss and Joseph Park, but they've never had them that I know of side by side in the ring or done anything like that. Do you think well, they could pull yeah, something like that off? They did do that well, one time behind the scenes. Go ahead, well, no, 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 no. They they did. Because this is what had a, a couple people I work with. They did not. They thought, you know, it was literally it was the Hannah Montana situation. They thought Joseph Parks and Abyss was the two separate people because um, one where I think Abyss came from under the ring during a Joseph Park. I think it was Joseph Park Bully Ray match, and then another where Park was in the ring and Abyss was on the stage. Of course, you know the hood of his hoodie was pulled up and he kind of had his head down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to explain to the guy. I was like, no, dude, that's not the same guy. I, was, I mean, that's not two different guys. That's it's the same guy. So they kind of pulled it off there. But, to, I mean, they mockingly did it, you know, some years back with uh, Hulk Hogan and oh, Mr. Yeah. America. Mr. America. But, I mean, well, also that was remember- very, on the, all, you know, on the nose that, you know, it was him. And, and so. then we also have to remember that after John Cena was fired – Due to the situation with Wade Barrett, Randy Orton, and the Nexus revolving around the WWE Championship, um, there was a mysterious gentleman, I believe he said it was his um, half-brother, Juan Cena, showed up at some of the house shows. Yeah, that was something. And you know what? <laughs> if they would have ever went through with Juan Cena, because Juan Cena had his own Twitter account. You know, huh. I loved reading Juan Cena's tweets. Um, I will say this. The Kurt Angle, remember when Kurt Angle used his brother when Angle was like severely injured? Yeah. And they had where Angle... Angle's brother was pinned. I like that. I think that was one of those ones I was ah, oh, because his brother looked so much like him, you know. Yeah, they really do look alike. Or what was it that um, Hawkins and Ryder were supposed to be the alternate oh, edges? Edge. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that I thought they actually pulled that off to a great degree for a little while there. But see, um, once again, though, that's that's you know the, that's the old switcheroo though. That's not you know somebody in a mask. Uh. You know, played by you know somebody who's supposed to be either out injured or suspended or what have you, in a mask, and then you know vehemently denying it, and then you know pulling off a side by side spot. That's not a you know a, a run in impersonation or something. So right, uh, I don't know. I mean, I would like to you know. I mean, nobody because nobody's been like they've kind of teased the idea of you know that 
Joe, the Joseph is abyss, but they've never outright, you know, nobody's ever been like, no, dude, I know you're abyss, you know, why are you pulling all this crap? So, But then know. why would abyss let himself be punked out like that in, in the character of Joseph Park, unless, of course, it's supposed to be a split personality thing? That's what I think they're going for, because remember, he, <clears throat> there's been a couple times where he's busted out with some of abyss's, you know, signature moves, so. So when, and, and you do realize that, that, I think that, that, that whole angle has been going for what a year now and then it, it if this is actually the way they're going to go then they're actually defaulting back to one of my favorite arguments of all time in WWF now E because logistically speaking unless there was some kind of ritual that I never saw or knew anything about it's still to this day technically impossible for Kane and The Undertaker to be in the same ring at the same time. Uh. Because when Mark Calloway was first introduced as The Undertaker, he was called Kane, Kane the, Undertaker. the Undertaker. Yeah, go figure that but one it was out. Only, it was only done for that one Survivor Series. Yeah, but by the same token, that was still the, his first appearance. I mean, come on. But wasn't it spelled C A I N? No. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, I it think was it was. So, no, it was they had him as K A N E, dude. Really? Sure? Go back and look. Wow. I, I don't see. I've always thought it was C A I N. No. Always, well, you know. <clears throat> uh. Uh-uh. I may be wrong, but I highly doubt it because that's one that is stuck in my craw all these years. That I just found. Well, it. Maybe he just did it as an homage to his brother that didn't show up for another ten years. <laughs> Who's been missing in action? Yeah, no, didn't even have him on the damn milk carton. Yes, I'm, it was spelled Kane the Undertaker. C A I N. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to go back and look at the video because I've still got it somewhere in the I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kane Undertaker's debut on Superstars of Wrestling 1990 right. is up on uh, YouTube. YouTube. There, everything is on freaking YouTube. including Thank God. Yeah, including what was it? Uh, when, uh, when da, 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 who was it? Was making the walk down the aisle in, back in the locker room when he retired. I think it was Edge and ADR. And, um, yeah, Edge retired, and then he had that final shot with Alberto Del Rio, and you could audibly hear the director or the camera person say, wink, as just before ADR winked at the camera and they went to commercial. Well, that was just so, like two weeks ago with the Austin Aries thing. I'm just, that is just so idiotic, because if the person doesn't know when they're out, can you not see a freaking hand signal counting down to the end of a segment? Well, it is ADR. He's not, he's, he's not, you know. By the way, I have to say this before we go to the top of the hour break. A lot of people know that I am a fan of NASCAR. Um, my father, actually, who um, used to, A, drive and, B, own a car that was racing small time here in, not small time, but I don't mean to use that word to belittle it in any capacity, but he was um, racing at Birmingham International Raceway as well as some other courses around um, back before I was born. And... I was watching some of the Phoenix race right near the... I've been watching it on and off since the pre-race. And from that vantage point, there's coming down to the final lap of the race or getting ready to go to the final lap. And Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon tagged each other. And Boyer, ended, I guess, I don't know if you say it intentionally or whatever, uh, Gordon ended up in the wall. Well, Jeff Gordon... For those who th- for those who think that Gordon still want to be that pretty boy who's just going to go ahead and take what he can get and bitch and whine about it every once in a while, he actually continued to drive his car slowly, and then as Boyer got back up to him, Gordon rammed into Boyer. Payback, gotta love it. Boyer's car caught on fire. Gordon came on down into pit road, and as Jeff Gordon is getting out of his car, one of the pit crew on Boyer's team comes up and just blindsides the hell out of Gordon. Gordon turned around swinging. His crew started to grab him and pin him down inside the toolbox to get him out of the way. The pit crew start going at it. And I mean, it's a knockdown drag out Saturday night bar fight. And I'm loving it. It's like, yeah, y'all go ahead. Say NASCAR ain't got it anymore. Every once in a while. Now, you know somebody's going to pay some crap loads of fines. There's going to be an ish load of fines going on in this situation. And then Boyer finally gets his car under control, stopped, get the fire put out, get him out of the car, and he goes just running like a dude. Half the teams in the NFL would have just sat back and said, can we sign him, please? 
<laughs> and he just makes his way over to Gordon's hauler and starts cr- charging in, and people just grab him and bring him back, and the whole thing starts up all over again. I feel honestly like I'm watching an old um, Southeastern Championship Wrestling st- um, stare down showdown teaser to go um, straight into commercial break or end of the show. So that's just it's just it takes so little sometimes to keep me amused. But to watch this unfold live, did we get a chance to catch the replay on it from the um where the final contact between Gordon and Boyer when the payback occurred? You'll sit back and say, damn, Vince is going to be paying attention to this. Who's he going to try to get out of this whole situation? So I wouldn't mind seeing Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon at WrestleMania. I think that would be a great draw because Vince could pull the NASCAR fans over and get some of the old school wrestling fans back in on it. So... That's just you my- can have spark plug Holly referee. You know, I kind of like that idea. Personally, I really do like that idea. Folks, we're going to take our top of the hour break. And we'll be back in five right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Ranger Network. Station, Ranger. Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside. Your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend. Fast Eddie Lay. Want to say greetings, good evening, how the hell are you? Welcome into Beyond Ringside, six minutes after the top of the hour. Live from the vault, you got it. Keeping this Sunday thing a going right here and right now. I'd like to welcome in tag team partners Mark and Mabo Bowman. Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fudge? Not me, and I just as soon not hear the name ever again in my life, but a name that I'm ready to say and hear or hear and say, but he never goes off hearsay. He always knows what he's talking about. The Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Uh, Mabo just mentioned this off uh, air, but I will mention it as well. Thank you, Brad Maddox, for uh, putting me over on national TV because I do have a mask and I do have a mohawk. And obviously, if you're saying it back to back, you're obviously saying it about me. But I paid my dues too, kid. Let me go over there and rub your hair. Is this a good boo boo? Is he going to be there? There you go. That's it. <laughs> Mabo, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, you know, what we could talk about was uh, Brad Maddox uh, this past weekend spoke, so to, you know, yeah, so right. to speak. Um, talking about, you know, you know that he wasn't in league with Punk and Heyman and, you know, when he groped Ryback's, you know, little wiener there in the middle of the hell in the cell. You think it was and, Liam Neeson? <laughs> oh God! If he was Liam Neeson, he would have broke, it. He would have broke his forearm when he nut shotted him. It have broke um, his gene pool. Oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, you know, Brad Maddox was. I, you know what? I wasn't even really paying attention because he's so dreamy. I wasn't even listening to his word. Um, but he did kind of mention, you know, <clears throat> something about. He, he said, he, he, "Yeah, he said I, I'm not six foot whatever. Uh, I don't yeah, have I, a mask. I don't have a mohawk. A mohawk. Yeah, right, back, so, back." Yeah, immediately people are like, huh. Mm-hmm. Well, at least anybody anybody who knows Wicked Nemesis was like, is he referring to him? Maybe he is. But uh, what I find funny is, and, and, and it's real shocking um, that, that, that WWE did this. <clears throat> you have to forgive me there, a little bit of sign of straightage. Um, they went and pulled an old, an old match, not from FCW, uh, with Brad Maddox and Ryback, Skip Sheffield, whatever you want to call him. And, and, and real quick, can I go off on a little, not a side tangent, but does anybody remember when he was Skip Sheffield? Yes. And, yes. and his tagline was, do do the do, and yip, 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 yip. Yip, Seriously, yip, yip, I remember that. Did, did anybody really think yip, yip, yip was going to make it onto a t-shirt? Hell no. I mean, we yip, got yip, a yip, yes, yip, yes. Yip. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yip, 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 yip. Remember that Sesame Street? Bow, yeah, bow, he was bow, like one of those Sesame yip, Street yip. characters. Yep. But, uh, yeah, yip, yip, we yip. got a yes, yes, yes shirt, but, you know, <laughs> we didn't get a yip, yip, yip. Do, make it do what it do. Corn fed, meathead, whatever. <laughs> oh, God. Bless him. He was, at least he hung around. <clears throat> it Thank took God. him breaking his, his thigh muscle or femur or whatever. It took him <laughs> breaking his leg <laughs> to get rid of that gimmick. So, any of you up, any of you, get, you know, any of you cats in, in, in NXTFCW, whatever it is now, NXT any of you guys, if you're saddled with a horrible gimmick, break your leg. Break your leg. Like, if, if, if you're about to get called up, you know, like poor Johnny Curry. So we'll we'll touch on Fandango, Fandango later. If you're, uh, you know, being brought up, 
or in your first year and you've got a horrible gimmick, break your leg. Literally snap your leg, be out for almost a year, and you'll come back with an awesome gimmick and you'll get put over huge. But back to the Brad Maddox situation, but it was not from FCW, but back from when WWE used to have OVW as a a uh, enhancement company. Developmental. Um, development, thank you. <clears throat> What's the, I don't know why I'm starting to get all mucusy here. It's, it's really starting to affect me. Cough button. Um, they actually had a match where Ryback with hair and not as roided up was going through, and I guess it was a, they were a fraternity style group, I don't know, but Brad Maddox was one of the, uh, one of the, one of the gentlemen in the ring, and WWE actually released this photo footage, so whether they'll work, you know, they released it on, uh, their Twitter page or something, and maybe even their main page, so, uh, maybe they will factor this in as well, I don't know, but it was just, you know, kind of kudos to them that, you know, they're not... You know, the, you know, if this would have been a couple of years ago, WWE would have ignored it. They would have been like, no, what are you talking about? They've never met before. Ryback's a monster. He was born in a gym, crapped out by Schwarzenegger, or, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was just, I just, you know, got to give little props to them for doing that. And I personally love the fact that they didn't advertise the appearance by Vince McMahon. So I'm going to use everybody. I'm going to use the E's favorite word and Jim Ross's favorite word. The pop that you heard when Vince McMahon's music started to hit near the end of what Brad Maddox had to say, and I damn sure won't call that a promo. I'll just say, yeah, he rambled. Um, but when Vince's music hit and you heard that crowd exp- explode, that was purely organic, and I loved it. It's like, wait, Vince is here? Cool! Well, see, that's the thing with Vince. I mean, as long as, you know... You bring him out every every so often, regardless of you know what what he's what role is he's in at the time. People are gonna you know people are gonna go just bananas because he he <clears throat> he has become an icon. Yes, you know so to speak. And, you know, of course we, we were all remember during the Attitude Era where if you that it wasn't even the first you know, three or four chords of, of no chance. And people were already like, Beow! Oh, just like that. If you go back, everybody on the tape went, Beow! Um, yeah, but I love the fact that it was done in Brit- in Great Britain. And that obviously means that Vince, of course, was on the road with them for a lot of that tour. So Actually, he, he was. Um, uh, him and uh, Trips, you know, I get to call him Trips because we're, we're that close. Uh, they actually did fly out... Um, I guess Tuesday morning, British time. Okay. Uh, and to try to get back to watch uh, Linda fail miserably in her her political bid. By the way, Eddie yes. and Wicked, feel free to chime in if you know the answer. Do you guys know? And I've looked this up. I've seen I've seen uh, the what was, you know what was lost. But do you guys know how much Linda McMahon lost in uh, her, her fifty million bid? dollars? Her first 50. one was. 50. Fifty million dollars again? Yes. Oh man. Okay. Ignore that. You don't. Okay. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No, Mavo. Can you uh, tell us, sir? En- enlighten us. Yes. Do you know how much she 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 lost? She lost millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I like his better than ours. <laughs> and if anybody says that's what she says, I will smack you. <laughs> That's what the woman of ill repute replied. Or we could see. Here's the thing. I thought we we had made an agreement actually, and I just kind of broke it a second ago. Uh, the agreement was that we weren't going to use that's what that's what she said, and we could came up with the ultimate phrase, and I give him credit for it every time I say it. Um, that that sounds like my first time. Wait a minute. When did we? She's no, that was you that said that sounds like my first time. No, that wasn't. That was wicked. Wait, was it me or you, wicked? That was you. It was Mabo. I thought uh, it was I wicked. Believe so I don't know. I, yeah, marijuana affects the memory. No, because I remember I said that because I believe so. Okay, then Mabo. I apologize but to I, everybody that I've told that wicked nemesis said it. I was wrong. It was Mabo. I didn't know that we had made it agreement not to say that's what, not to say that's what she said. Yeah, because I, one of us made the statement that it was kind of played out that we'd said it so damn much, and then we um, decided to change it to that sounds like my first time. I think you're thinking of Ted Guinness. Hell no, I'm not. 
It's definitely not. Know. It's definitely not me because I, I still use that every day. I can't help it. I feel like I'm, my head's going to explode if I don't say it and I hear something. Dude, y'all should have been down at Buffalo Wild Wings because when I started saying that down there, I'm about a year and a, I'm about a year ago, year and a half two years, something like that, everybody got on the bandwagon, and Statler and Waldorf, also known as Don and Phil, Phil especially, I would say the most innocuous statement that could any that if you have an IQ, you can translate it into something X-rated, and Phil, above everything else that would happen, would scream in the middle of Buffalo Wild Wings, that's what she said. And I'm sitting back, (laughs) I'm not kidding. I'm really not kidding. Speaking of not kidding, uh, TNA Impact Wrestling has a pay per view coming up in about forty four minutes from right now. Going to be taking a little. We were, bit- talking, we were talking about Tim earlier, weren't we? <laughs> yes, it really wasn't like season six of Dallas where it never happened. It was all a dream. Um, <sighs> which I am so glad that show is coming back. I am really. I mean, the when the the return of Dallas to me was cool as hell. I love the storylines. <laughs> I think that it was a little bit too busy at some points, but other than that, they did a great job putting it together. And to me, the ultimate television badass, J.R. Ewing, Larry Hagman, the script writing for his character is still phenomenal, plain and simple. Whoever they... No, no, no. no. Uh, the ultimate badass <laughs> male in television is a little 12-year-old boy named Carl. Uh, as long as it's not on something called the new normal, I guess I might I might be able to see it. Um, there's some shows that I will not watch. However, um, from that vantage point, you know, DNA has a pay per view. I've heard that rumor. <laughs> Guess what? I think it is. A re- Allegedly, they have a pay per view coming up in forty three minutes. <laughs> we had to go back to our favorite word. Allegedly, but a couple of things I want to hit real quick before we go back topical. Uh, first off, thank you to everybody who has noticed the fact that the twenty four seven is channel. The channel is back up. Um, recent interviews and episodes are being played twenty four seven through beyondringside.com dot com as well as through the Shoutcast Radio Network. Um, you can listen through Windows Media Player. You can listen through QuickTime, iTunes, um, Winamp. You can also download the Shoutcast app and find Beyond Ringside 24-7. Um, of course, like I said, the home is on BeyondRingside.com. Um, recent episodes and interviews, including interviews with the NWA Women's World Champion, Casey Carlisle, um, professional wrestling superstars, Casey Carlisle, uh, excuse me, um, Christy Ritchie, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who's, whose birthday is today, by the way? There you go. We have a candle. That's all I'm going to say. Um, from that vantage point, professional Dude. boxing. What? Dude, seriously. What? Really? Now, if you'd have said it, everybody would have thought it was funny. So I say and I get crucified for it. Come on. Well, I'm, come on. That's, uh I do, and I've also got cheesecake in the refrigerator. We can put the candle oh. in the cheesecake. Oh, uh, stop talking. You know what? You're on timeout. Go sit in the corner for five minutes. Me and Wicked will do the rest of the show. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Go sit in the, go sit in the corner. <laughs> And, of course, thank you to everybody who's been joining us on Twitter. I swear we're trying to find a way to tweet more often. Same thing on Facebook, facebook.com slash beyondringsidelive. Um, Show information is starting to be posted on a regular basis back over at the Facebook fan page for Beyond Ringside. So, folks, if you've got an upcoming event, professional wrestling, boxing, mixed martial arts, it can even be roller derby, um, you are more than welcome to post a graphic, the poster, the flyer, the picture of the upcoming event, or a link to a Facebook fan page. If you post a link to a retail site, I will take it down and ban you from the page forever and ever. Amen. Um, also, um, well, what if the what if the event takes place in the parking lot of a retail? It can if as long as it's a live event, that's fine. Well, I don't know too many recorded events. Well, there are eye pay per views that are replayed. Yes, but are they replayed in the retail parking lot? That I don't know. Although some say that there are some shows that should definitely still take place in parking lots of restaurants and things like that. Um, you've been to one. I have. <laughs> Did you ever dry your cla- dry your outfit out? <laughs> uh, we not talk about them, boys. <laughs> I'm, I'm about tired of them. They're just. All the, honestly, all they are, that's a glorified backyard company. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, I'd like to welcome in a good friend of ours and alumni member, the Horseman's Advocate, Andy Hudson. Andrew, how you doing, buddy? I'm just making it one day at a time, man. How are y'all doing? Uh, fair to partly cloudy. You're so, um, all of us are... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Gotta love when that happens. Da, 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 da. Who'd we lose? Wicked? Yep. Okay, we're going to try to get him back. 
Um, myself, Wicked Mabo, trying to get this thing going on a Sunday night. Uh, TNA pay-per-view coming up in just a little while. Yay. Well, allegedly a pay-per-view is taking place in about 39 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, understand the concept. <laughs> what you got going on? Well, right now, just got on I-65 heading to work. I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, we all have our crosses to bear. Amen. Well, while I've got all four of us set and ready to roll, and I know Wicked's back with us now, thank you. Um, well, we had him for a second. We'll get him back, I promise. The latter match with A-Double and Jeff Hardy has the potential to be a very good match. But the thing about it is, I think they sprung the ladder match concept way too soon as far as the series goes. And if they they should have made that a third match instead of the, the rematch. And I think that they were actually jumping the gun to bring that on board. Um, Mabo, your thoughts? Agree or disagree? Um, well... <clears throat> they had to do something because they were walking around with two different titles and, you know, Hulk was, uh, you know, you, you better give him the other title back, brother, even though he's not using it, which didn't make sense to me. I mean, if the guy's using that, whatever that is, <laughs> whatever Jeff Hardy calls that belt, that thing looks hideous. Um, I think Wicked said it looks like a an old Divas belt or something like that. No, not even it, that Not even that good. Uh, but uh, it, uh, you know, they pulled they pulled the cord on that too soon. Well, I mean, I could see why they did it so they could have you know do the old Sean Razor Ramon ladder Thank match you. with both belts hanging. But but yeah, I mean, it was you know and now it, the only way they could have saved it would have been like to have Austin Aries bring you know bring it out you know right before and be like no, I am you know I've got the belt you know bring it out later on. But when they walking around with it now, that's Unfortunately, that's really the only thing they could have done. Wicked Nemesis. With, with, oh, go ahead. With two, well, I'm just going to say with two with two belts in play. So yeah, I, I do agree though. I think that should have that should have been the blow off to the to the feud. You know, maybe do a you know a, a Falls Count Anywhere match at one point because you know we haven't seen Jeff Hardy throw himself off of a stage lately or off of a jumbotron. So nope. But yeah, they did pull the core too soon on. It. Okay, Wicked. Of course they did. Uh, anytime you do. An angle that quick. Anytime you have a gimmick match that quick, you've dropped the ball. Now, Andy, how much of impact have you been able to catch lately? I've actually been able to see about the last two or three straight weeks. I'm actually waiting on if uh, Ron Perlman or somebody else from Sons of Anarchy is going to make a special guest appearance at some time, but <laughs> be that as it may, uh, I agree. I agree with you, Eddie. It's uh, and with Wick and everybody else, it's it's too soon for the ladder match. But truthfully, it's not surprising because let's face it: when Jeff Hardy is involved in a series of matches with the same person, sooner or later, a ladder match is going to be involved. Which you know, Jeff always does a great job in about any match he does. But yeah. I think it should have been. I think the latter match should have been the rubber match, the third one out. Now, from that vantage point, let's go ahead and bring up the X Division Championship. Joey Ryan taking on Rob Van Dam tonight at the pay per view. Turning point from TNA Wrestling, Impact Wrestling. Um, does it? Right now, I have to say this: they've tried to make it, and I'm going to use that word again, organic. They've tried to make it feel organic, but to me, it just feels pushed. It feels rushed. And it feels completely out of place. Am I the only one that thinks this, Mabo? Yeah, I mean the, uh, the title's not on the line, is it? It says X Division Championship. Really? Because I remember remember Hulk sat there and you know, you know when when he when he ran into Joey Ryan backstage, he was like, "You haven't been here long enough for me to do this and blah 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 and do that." So. I didn't even know if the belt was on the line or not. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, ImpactWrestling.com right now, and the graphic does say X Division Championship. So unless they've decided to change it or unless they're not putting it on the line, they're technically false advertising then. But continue. Well, remember, though, it's always card subject to change. Asterisk. But, uh, you know, I don't know. 
Wicked? I think. Oh, go I ahead. think that's what they're doing, though. Hold on, I'm, I'm trying. I'm about to cough. <laughs> um, you know, I, it's, it, it's, is, it, is it too soon? Yeah, because they could have had a couple more matches or whatever. They, they you know, if, if you're gonna, here's my thing: if you're gonna have a match at a pay per view, you better have some build to it in the in the in the uh, preceding uh, weeks. So it'll actually make the match mean something, right? You know, that's just like with the the, the Joe Magnus thing. You know, as little time as they've got, at least they have history to fall back on when they you know make the TV uh, or when they you know make the TV title put the, put the TV title on the line. So right. Okay, wicked. Uh, this has been TNA's forte. Uh, the one thing about TNA is they're inconsistent. They like to rush. It's the same thing that happened in WCW, and it seems that's what WWE has started to fall in the trend to. And once again, we're talking about somebody cutting a promo, not keeping up with the storylines and the angles. Good job, Hogan. That's strike two. Andy Hudson. I think it's definite. I think they're definitely pushing it too quick, but it reminds me of, and forgive my brain freeze here, but wasn't the show WWE did a number of years ago with Al Snow and them, wasn't it called Tough Enough? Hmm. Of course. Okay. Well, if y'all, if you can remember once, I mean, especially after the first season he had. Maven and Nadia and uh, uh, announcer on SmackDown. Now I cannot believe I keep forgetting his name. Josh, but, Matthews. Josh Matthews. Yeah, thank you, Josh Matthews. If y'all can remember back then, once the first season was over, it was like it was like Vince was just pushing these new people on the fans. You know, hey, we ran this great show; it did real good, but. We've got to keep it going. You know, let's push, 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 push. And with TNA's version of Tough Enough or, you know, whatever, it just seems to me that's what they're, they're doing the exact same thing. This is... Hold on. Excuse I'm me? Oh, oh, sorry. I was just okay. going uh, oh. to hit on... Go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, now, I could actually see this working if there was somebody else's... I think Joey Ryan against Zima I would have been better just for me because, let's face it, you're putting Joey Ryan in the ring in a title match, a match alone, let alone a title match, with one of the best workers this industry has ever seen in RVD. And I got to go along with Wicked. It's just, it's too quick. It's just way too quick. Now, let me say something really quick about the difference between Tough Enough and the Gut Check. First of all, the Gut Check is a work because these guys that come in have been working uh, angles and have been on the indies forever. Joey Ryan's been in the business, what, 10, 11 years? Yeah, at least. <laughs> and Zima Ion's been in the business, you know, five or six years. Yeah. So, I mean, and with Tough Enough, a lot of these guys had only had minimal training, if none at all. Uh, I think I- Maven had trained once or for like a few months, and that was it. And, of course, Christopher Nowitzki had trained. He trained for like six months or, you know, a few months, not even a year. That's the difference. The gut check is they work. These guys are guys that are established on the indies that they're trying to get on TNA. Yeah, sometimes they give them, uh, they give them you know, different names. But uh, we're tough enough with ma- those guys. A lot of those people, as we said, hadn't even bumped. They'd never had a match. Joey Ryan's been working. We're acting like they're just throwing some greenhorn, some greenhorn, and against uh, Rob Van Dam, and they're not. Joey Ryan on the West Coast is very well known. I mean, you can talk to Liz Savage and some of these other people on the West Coast, Rikishi, Caesar Black. I mean, these are people that you know have seen his work and can speak for his work. But with this going on, is it rushed? Of course, it's rushed. Everything TNA does is rushed. They're inconsistent. As, as I said, but that's the difference between what Tough Enough did and what they're doing. They're actually putting in people that can work, with the exception of, uh, or well, I don't know, I guess uh, Zima can work, he's just uh, haphazard, I guess, or sloppy. He yeah, hurts and people. I, and, I, and I agree with that. I, I may have not said my meaning the way I really wanted to. I was just talking about the basic concept of I understand the difference, and yes, the people on gut check are 
established professional wrestlers. I, you know, I understand that and I get that. I was just saying that as far as the people from Gut Check, just like the people from Tough Enough, being forced down people's throats, agreeing that they were just yes. pushing them onto the TNA fans. You know, maybe a little too quick. I have no doubt the tough enough guys are established. They're well established. You know, I've never, I will never argue that. I was just saying the basic concept of pushing these particular characters, you know, and yes, I agree too, Wicked, that that's T, that's been TNA's mainframe from the word go. Sorry, Andy, I wasn't directing that at you. I was directing that to oh, everybody oh, that's no, listening sir. because, uh, you know, like, I guess doing two radio shows now, I encapsulate everything to everybody. I expect we have like a thousand listeners. You know, we have listeners that come in that may be casual wrestling fans. I do apologize. I did not mean that you are very astute in this in this, in oh, this no, business. Oh, no, sir. So I do apologize. No, no, for that. Like no I, I didn't take. Uh, let me just Sorry. say, I didn't take offense, sir. I wasn't, you know, it's nothing, like, it's nothing like that. I just wanted to explain my comment, you know, better. No, sir. I didn't. No, we can, we good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, you, I, I, you, I, they are rushing talk in the world. <laughs> I mean, come on. They they are pushing, uh, you know, what would be considered new talent. But I mean, isn't that what we get on the TNA about? Is not using the WWE ta- or using WWE talent? Yeah. Use your own talent. Well, at least they're trying. So we'll give them that. So yeah. golf clap. I'll give golf clap. I'll give golf them clap. that. It's my golf clap. You know, I still have to say, you're, I was making the reference to Cena a little while ago, and I have to bring this one back up. I think, for me, the highlight of Monday Night Raw, believe it or not, was actually two highlights. Number one, the pre-recorded show open. Yay, let's make it look that much more like an action-adventure television show or a TMZ-style show. Which one do you <laughs> really want to be? Hey, coming up tonight on Raw, ooh, scandal. And the number two, the Cena, um, the Cena setup, or the... I guess I can call it a promo. It was John Cena uh, getting when he made the uh, statement about getting Vicky Guerrero to do this is kind of like John Cena learning another wrestling move. What's it up to five, four? Does the shoulder block count? To me, that was pure humor comedy. I loved it because absolutely he, he's taken exactly what everybody says and turned it right back on him. Speaking of turning, yeah, but but at the same time though, is he saying that just so he could be like, you know? Oh well, I'm acknowledging that you're acknowledging that I have only I have a limited um, skill set. So maybe you know I, I'm on the inside. set up or the I guess I can call it a promo it was John Cena uh, getting when he made the uh, statement about getting Vicky Guerrero to do this is kind of like John Cena learning another wrestling move what's it up to five four does the shoulder block count to me that was pure humor comedy I loved it because absolutely he, he's taken exactly what everybody says and turned it right back on him speaking of turn- yeah, but but at the same time though is he saying that just so he could be like you know, oh well, I'm acknowledging that you're acknowledging that I have only I have a limited um, skill set. So maybe you know I, I'm on the inside joke with you guys too, so we can all be buddies. And please stop making that joke; it hurts my feelings. I don't think it hurts I don't know. his feelings. Uh, he turned around and actually incorporated a new move in that yeah. uh, it, it, that night. So hey, so he was asking, <laughs> does the shoulder block count as his fifth move, or does thou that new move actually count as his fifth move, or does he actually now have six moves of doom, as he calls them? Tell you what, let's take the bottom of the hour break, folks. We'll be back in five right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. You got us. In the words of Ozzy Osbourne, flying high again. 
Or at least one of us is. <laughs> Welcome back to Beyond Ringside. Sunday night, 23 before the top of the hour. Let's do this thing. Fast Eddie Lane, live behind the microphone, live behind the control board. Welcoming back in Mabo, Mark Bowman. I think something just blew up in the living room. What the hell was that? Wicked Nemesis, how you doing? <laughs> Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, can we get your take on the TNA pay-per-view tonight? Well, TNA and then the Luke Gallows and Fat Ass and the Aces and Ace rip-off mother... Yeah. Well, it's the flock heart. Oh, there you go. Andy Hudson, you back with us? Yeah, for just a minute. All right. I'll tell your story because we're tired of talking to you. There you go. Well, y'all handle something else for a minute. And, uh, That's what I've been doing the whole show. That's what maybe has been doing the whole couple show. minutes. And the entire 30, 45 hours before the show started, he was handling that all by himself. And we'll let no, him. I was I was asleep for about six hours. Ooh, wicked. I just thought about something. Uh-oh. We could have a new se- we could have a new segment on the show. Andy Hudson's butthole. Andy Hudson's Maybe. butthole. Andy You've Hudson's been taking O'Hagan butthole. lessons. Let's all go and see. You've been taking O'Hagan lessons. That's all I'm going to say. That, that come on. No, I will always be better than him. I Matter- might not be as in shape as he is, but I'll always be better than him. <laughs> I'd like to see a battle of the wits between you two. About no, it'd be like fighting an armed man, me against him. Yeah, I brought a B seventeen to a um, to an uh, to a gunfight. <laughs> oh, the just, love, the love and respect. I'm just feeling oozing through my phone right now, just overwhelmed. Great, Maybo really talks. About, Maybo talks about your butt, and you start talking about oozing. Um, yeah. You said you originally the beat sweats with you there, buddy. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I have that shit every time with this back. Never mind. Hey, <laughs> hey, don't talk about Eddie like that. He lost ten pounds this week. <laughs> Woo, go team. And found 15. Now, Andy, you said you were originally going to try to call in last week, but real life got in the way of it. Go ahead. Yeah, um, after seeing the passing, reading about the passing of Brad Armstrong, many years, a number of years ago, WCW has, hadn't even been around long, but they came to Birmingham to the Civic Center, and me and a friend of mine were there, and we just got up and walked to the upper part, the circular part where all the exit doors are and things. The atrium. Well, we walked. We walked toward one particular door, and Brad Armstrong, who had wrestled that night, he was finishing up a conversation with a young guy, and he went to leave, and I wasn't close enough to, you know, really carry on a conversation with the man. So he turned around and headed for the door, and. Where I thought I just said bye, Mr. Armstrong. And he turned around, saw me and my friend, and he actually trotted up to us. He came up to us. We didn't have to go to him. And he had his hand out and, you know, asked us how we were doing, how we enjoyed the show, and, you know, was, did we like his match? And of course, you know, I'm sitting here thinking this is the first the actual first professional wrestler I have ever met. And he came up to me. I didn't have to go to him. He came to me. And, of course, I told him, you know, yeah, we're enjoying the show, and I really apologize about the thought that I can't remember who he wrestled that night. But I do know, I do remember he did lose. But, you know, and I told him tough break on the loss and all this. And he just kind of smiled at me and said, well, he said, that's the way it goes sometimes. He said, I'll get him next time. And, of course, he left. But that has always stuck with me over these years that, you know, here's a guy that gets paid money to do what I've always, my whole life, wanted to do. Everybody knows his name down here. And he not only took the time to talk to me and my friend, he came up to us. He was on his way out the door. He had bag in hand. And he turned around and came back to us. And to me, that just, not only Brad, but the entire Armstrong family, you know, to me showed what kind of character they've had. And I know we've all met all of them, you know, a number of times. But when I saw that he had passed, that that's, it just reminded me of that that's always stuck with me. And 
you know, that's why Brad Armstrong truly was really one of my favorites growing up. And, you know, I just personally want to send my, you know, prayers and best wishes to the, to the entire James family. And uh, I appreciate Eddie letting me share that little story. That's just, like I said, just something that's always stuck with me. Not a problem, dude. Not a problem. Always happy to have you on the show. And like I said, always, you know, I'm still... I don't, I, I've been a little bit out of the loop over the last week because I've had a lot of things going on and trying to get situations <laughs> resolved. Oh, boy, I wouldn't wish my life on anybody right now. But you know something? I will make every second count as only I can in every way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, you know, taking a look at the pay-per-view coming up in just a few minutes, let's go ahead and try to run this thing down. I don't have the secondary microphone set up, so I'm going to have to swing back and forth. Da, 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 da. Okay, damn it, where'd it go? Yes, we're doing this live, kids. That's why I'm not really that worried about it. Right uh, now. Well, I want to say something really quick. Uh, last night at Universal Independent Wrestling. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, in uh, Buchanan, Georgia, uh, you know, they had a 10 bell salute to Brad. Uh, I went to Brad Armstrong's wake. Uh, it was on the last show that Brad was on. It was, you know, not close. I knew the Armstrong family, they were always very nice to me very eloquent uh they always uh seem to enjoy my company because they never ran me off <laughs> it was a joke uh but last night when they did the tim Bell- at first everybody was going to go out then they said just faces and then they said everybody to go out i chose not to go out because as i told uh, common knowledge damon christopher i said you know we can be respectful back here i felt that i should know shape and form go out there because you guys know the types of, the type of heat i can get I did not want to waste that heat, and that's nothing, but I know the Armstrong family uh, would, would agree with this because it's logical. If you get as much white-hot heat that you can actually put asses in the seats, you do not need to go back. When they do that tempo count, you can stay backstage and lower your head and do it there. You don't have to go stand in the ring with everybody that you know is on the show. I don't agree with that. Uh, like I said, not told everybody I let it be known, but uh, some people asked why I was not out there because they had seen me, you know, backstage when they were pulling up because, of course, right. doors open like two hours early. But that is why I did not, because as much heat as I get, and everywhere I go, I damn near cause a riot. <laughs> There's no sense me going out there, and then people see me, because I promise you this, and you guys know this, I will take away from that, no matter what people are going to... As one woman said, she was like, you know what, you just have the, you just have the face that people just want to boo. I said, no, they have the mask. I have the mask that they just want to hate. That's what it is. That works. <laughs> but proceed. Let's go ahead and go with this thing real quick. TNA pay-per-view, Impact Wrestling, in about 14 minutes from right now. Mixed tag team attraction. Tara and what's-his-name versus ODB and Eric Young. Maybo. Um, I'm going to say uh, Tara and Mr. Craptacular uh, for the simple fact that First of all, EY, for those who don't know, in the middle of contracts, might not be around. Plus, he's got the, you know, off-the-hook extreme, you know, catch of herpes or whatever. And it's a funny show. I do encourage everybody to watch it. It is, it is a very good show. Um, so I, I'm going to, um, you know, of course, TNA will prove me wrong and go in the foot opposite direction. But I'm going to go with, uh, uh, unless, uh, I've got so many scenarios running my head for the whole match, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and say, Tara and her little man meet boyfriend. Wicked. Uh, first of all, what is this about Eric Young's show? And second of all, I do believe Tara and whatever is you know whatever the heck his name is is going to go over. Yeah, Ewa's um, actually got his own show. Yeah, he's got it. He he's already had one season of it. It's called uh, Off the Off the Hook ex, uh, Extreme Catches or Deadliest Catches or whatever. Yeah. And we all know the Deadliest Catches aids. But he uh, <laughs> what he does is he he claims to be an avid fisherman anyway. And he just goes out, and he doesn't, you know, put on any kind of airs or anything. He's pretty much the same Eric Young that you see. And he uh, goes out, and they do, like, these extreme fishing, like, uh, what was he, shark fishing on, like, a paddle board one time? Yep. And it's, it's, dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's, uh, they were cat fisting at one point, not, not the kind you would watch on the, on the, you know, red tube or anything. This was another kind of cat fisting where he had hot chicks. Oh, wait, no, that is the same thing. They were basically shoving their fists in dark, wet holes and pulling out something fishy. 
Andy Hudson, prediction. Uh, Tara and her meat stick or whatever the heck he is. I'll agree with the concept of the idea of not knowing exactly which way Eric Young's going to go because I think he's finally had enough of the BS with Impact Wrestling. Um, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they turned around and had ODB turn on Eric and she and Tara go off and look like they're going to tag team Mr. Craptacular. So I'll go ahead and just go ahead and say Tara and what's his name? Big Brother. Yeah. 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 Um, by the way, Big I consider... I consider that to be the fourth biggest waste of TNA airtime this year, but that's just me. Um, hey, psh, Joseph Park versus the director of Chaos, who's not even a patched in member, but he's got a director title. Mabo. Uh, I'm going to say if, if, I mean, there's no way that they, if they have him lose, it's just going to be. Uh, Pointless, and they'll probably just kick him out or something. So I, I'm, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to say Bashful goes over. Wicked. Luke Gallows. Andy. Park. Say what? Joseph Park. Okay, you're going for the upset. I'm saying they just yeah. they just unveiled him, so therefore there's no way in hell they're going to put Park over. It's just it's way too soon. If it had been four weeks into it, then I'd say Park would have a they, – they, it would be a standable option for Park to go over. But this soon after revealing Doc or Director of Chaos or PT, Bugs, and Doomsday from the old Kids of Caper 1970s Saturday morning show, that's an entirely different animal altogether. Um, X Division Championship, Joey Ryan challenging Rob Van Dam. Maybo. Uh, I'm going to say RVD. Wicked. Sorry, uh, definitely RVD, I think. Andy. RVD. I'm going Joey Ryan, and I'm seeing a Matt Morgan interference run. Um, I think that they've got a lot banked on Joey Ryan. RVD doesn't need the belt. I think that the controversial finish to the match would push um, Joey Ryan up a little bit, also continue the heat between him and Al Snow, and therefore Snow decides to go and start concentrating more on the X Division and make it a personal vendetta against Joey Ryan. But remember, Hogan said that Morgan was not to be allowed around ringside at all. I think something's going to happen. Somehow or another. I don't know what, but I know somehow or another it's going to happen. It's TNA. Well, I think Hogan's going to counter the Matt Morgan interference. You think so? Yes. Okay. And then RVD and Hogan go off and blaze a big fat blunt backstage. <laughs> Devon versus Kurt Angle. Mark Bowman. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Devon, and we're going to find out that one of the Aces and Eights members is Wes Briscoe. Okay. Wicked Nemesis. Oh, Wes, Wes Briscoe is going to be involved in the finish somehow, some way. Okay. Wicked Nemesis. Oh, wait. Since uh, I'm, wait, wait, wait. Since I'm using shoot names, the Wicked Nemesis. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, somehow, hmm. What what has been really quick? What has been the lead up to this match? I'm sorry. Kurt wants a piece of one of the aces of eights, and he wants a piece of Devon. Okay, that's all the build up to it. Pretty uh, much. Somehow the aces and eights uh, go out. Kurt Angle wins by disqualification, and then Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam and Hulk Smoke blind. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Hudson. I'll take Angle. I'm going to go ahead and take Angle by disqualification as well. The uh, eight, the rest of the Aces and Eights disappear, di- um, interfere in a really bad NWO style um, run in. That's all I can figure on that one. Yep. Um, no disqualification for the Television Championship. Magnus, Joe, Maybo. Uh, Joe. Wicked. Magnus. Andy. Joe. I'm going with Joe. And I think that Joe's last promo on television was absolutely priceless. It was one of the best pieces of microphone work that Joe has done. And I think he's renewed his intensity, and that means he's probably gotten a raise. Um, Wait a minute. So he didn't. So he didn't say anything. Is what you're saying? No, he actually was on. And <laughs> that'd be the best. That'd be the best work he's ever done. No, this was actually very good. Especially, I mean, uh, modern day television standards. It was good television. And no, you know who cut a good promo as a big man besides o- Ole Anderson could cut a big could cut a promo as a big man. But you know who else could? Stan Hansen. I believed that he was going to come through and crap in the middle of my of my hall, and I was going to be like, "There's nothing I can do about this. I'm seven. This guy has tobacco coming out of his mouth, and he's a big guy, and, 
and, and he was blind as a bat, which I didn't know at the time. But, uh, yeah, no, Smojo should not talk. I'm sorry. And Give him a manager. Oli wasn't a big man. Stan Hansen you, was like seven inches. Met Ole Anderson? Yes. Ole Anderson is a big man. The man had had the hands. Uh, I shook hands with uh, with Lord Stephen Regal one time, and I've shaken hands with uh, Bobby Eaton. They've had some large hands for their size. Ole Anderson's hand looked like the Big Show's. Is the Big Show walked by? Ole Anderson was a stout human being. Okay, robust I can believe. Stout I can believe. Really big? No, I can't believe. Hanson was taller and about the same girth as Ole, but um, Andy. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Hanson was the original Punisher. I know that. <laughs> wait, 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 we're talking about being big and girthy and stuff. Wait, are we still talking about wrestling? Yeah, yes. We're talking about wrestling? Yes. Liam Neeson appears in the show. <laughs> Three. Andy, your prediction. Which match are we on? I think we're still on Magnus Joe. Oh, I said Joe. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, th- we're past that. Come on, Eddie. I, I made the joke. Let's go. Okay. Tag team has to go to work. Did I actually make a prediction on this one, or do I actually give a damn? Oh, yeah, I'm going with Joe. Um, tag team championship match. Christopher Daniels, Kazarian versus Chavo Guerrero and Supermex Hernandez Bowman. Uh, I'm going to go with LAX 2.0, 3.5, because, I mean, honestly, I don't think Daniels and Kazarian need the belts. But uh, they, or if they do, Chavo and Hernandez need them more. So I'm going to say Chavo and Hernandez. M, uh, excuse me, W Nemesis. I'm about to uh, kind of break kayfabe on this, but uh, the fact that Chavo goes out in his last promo and says that he lies, he cheats, and he steals, you know that the WWE is going to get in a check from TNA. I think they're going to take the belts off of them as punishment for him saying that. That's just me. That's what I think. Hudson. Kazarian and Daniels. I'm going to go with Kazarian and Daniels also because I have to say it like this. If, um, Mabo, I think, made the comment about not needing the belts, but by the same token, it's funnier to have – the World Tag Team Championships of the world around the waist of Kazarian and Daniels. Um, the belts have done absolutely nothing to benefit Guerrero and Hernandez. Guerrero and Hernandez have done absolutely nothing to benefit the Tag Team Championships. And, oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, I'm not arguing that. They're horrible. I mean, ever since his debut in Impact Wrestling, if there has been... In, and I say this just from a television standpoint... I have a world of respect for Chavo Guerrero. He is a tremendous worker in ring and probably one of the most enduring personalities. He is definitely a, he is definitely an asset and a tribute to the Guerrero family name and legacy. But ever since his imp, imp, debut on Impact, he has been such a non-factor, it's not even funny. I thought for sure that they would go ahead and put him straight into the X Division because I think that's where he would do the most good. Um, so my personal prediction, Kaz and Daniels, plain and simple. Um, from that... Number one contenders match, and I love the twist they put on this. But let's go ahead and go with it. Bobby Roode, James Storm, AJ Styles. Marcus. Um, I'm, I'm, and second I'm, half, who's, who's going to take the pin? Okay, who's going to take the pin? Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say James Storm is going to take the pin. Over? I mean, by, uh, by who's going to take the pin, as in who's going to get pinned? Okay, uh, Storm's getting pinned, and I'm gonna say AJ's gonna win it. Okay, AJ over Storm. Um, Wicked. Well, since uh, James Storm has been hanging out with Hogan, Hogan's been escorting him out, and you can't have James Storm come out without Hogan. James Storm's gonna take the fall on this, but I think Bobby Roode's gonna win this. The It Factor, which uh, that's copyright infringement because I started calling Corey Hollis the It Factor a long time ago. TNA, time to pay up. I and by the way, did you notice that when they were doing the gun, uh, the gut check, uh, and and by the way, congratulations to York Peppermint Patty. It looks like got the face, you know, got the body of a god with the face of the crib keeper. Um, anybody notice that whenever Taz says it factor, he makes the small wiener hand gesture? Nope, didn't pay that much attention. But thanks for pointing that one out, um, <laughs> Andy. I will say Bob. I will say Bobby Roode wins the match, and he will pin AJ because in Wicked Zone, 
thinking if they're going to punish Chavo and them, then they dang well got to punish AJ Styles for the best comment I've heard all year uh, about being in the elevator. And I guess if your name's AJ, you know, or I guess that's a common thing if your name is AJ, I literally dropped the remote to grab my stomach to laugh. That absolutely priceless. But on the match itself, Bobby Roode pins AJ Styles. World Championship match. Austin Aries challenging Jeff Hardy. Ladder match. Mabo. Jeff Hardy. Wigan Nemesis. Jeff Hardy wins this, of course, because it's a ladder match. And then Jeff Hardy, Rob Van Dam, Hulk Hogan, and everybody goes backstage and smokes a big blunt backstage at the Impact Zone with all their five fans. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Got that out of the way. I'm actually going Austin Aries because they will not only need a rubber match, but I think the curve is going to be the opposite of what Wicked said because it is a ladder match. Jeff Hardy's match, I think Aries wins. I would like to see Aries go back over with the title because I think it works better for him and the world championship means more around the waist of the greatest man that ever lived. I think that them putting the belt on Jeff Hardy for a month is a great way of saying, hey, you cleaned up, you sobered up, you straightened up, you haven't gone to prison yet, yet, allegedly, and, you know, we gave it to you for a month. Now, your contract's up. Do what you want to do. If you want to stay with the company, we'll work on it. If you don't want to stay with the company, happy trails. But I think right now, in the interest of maintaining the virtue and the status of a world championship, it needs to be on someone who genuinely is a world champion, caliber personality and worker, and I think that it's got to be Austin Aries. Um, pay-per-view starts in about 30 seconds. Folks, we're going to take the top of the hour break, and we'll be back in five right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Stay tuned. Love it. Welcome back in. Beyond Ringside Live, Sunday night, six minutes after the top of the hour. Pay-per-view just started, and that would be complete apathy in my voice. <laughs> the pay-per-view started. Does that, mean, does, that, does that mean we can forget that TNA had a pay-per-view tonight again? Let's go for it. Fast Eddie Lane behind the control panel. Mabo, come on back one more time. We have a variety of sauces. We have barbecue, uh, honey barbecue. Vinaigrette, um, hot fudge. Would you like a hot apple pie? Leave Caution, it. Contents may be hot. Leave it to you to like the hot fudge. Wicked nemesis, come on back in. First of all, let me take this opportunity to say hello to the one and only creepy clown. Creepy clown, heads up. Thank you for showing up. Thank you, Harrison Ford, for making your appearance tonight. <laughs> and, and Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian. God, please quit mentioning that name in my presence. I would hey, like. Hey, to... hey, hey! If you mention corn, it three times corn, and run backwards, corn, it's porn cornfield. Yes, I know. Uh, yes, porn star Kim Kardashian. Okay. I'm sorry. You can't put the word star anywhere near anybody with the name of that. Oh, I could, I could put something near her. You go fish. for it. I'm sure fifty bucks you can lay her anytime you want to. Hey, I'll, hey, I'll, hey. I'll go out, hey, I'll go after the Wookiee, too. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> let the Wookiee win. <laughs> well, i got to say something really quick, guys, before we go off. Uh, last night, Universal Independent Wrestling, you guys, uh, I know you guys had a thousand other things uh, you guys had going on for Saturday night. But for everybody that come out, if you are 140 years old, I do not care. If you step up out of the ring, if you come towards me, if you swing at me and I catch your Crypt Keeper arm as I did that 80-year-old woman last night, I could have crushed that old lady. She got up and she stepped probably 500 feet after me. And yes, I pushed two security guards into her. And I told that security guard if he ever let anyone come near me again, I was going to take it out on him after I ruptured their skull. Sit your butts in the seats. And if you come after me, you can ask Methuselah, because she paid for it. I'm sure she's got to take you know, her arthritis pain and smoke some weed with Hulk Hogan and all the rest of the TNA impact, allegedly. Uh, don't come after a wrestler. 
nope. plain and simple. I do not care. She could have had a knife. I don't know, but I know she swung at me, and I caught her hand because it was in slow motion. But uh, yeah, UIW show was great last night. Uh, big props to Glacier. I don't know if he can be called Glacier. Fred Yehi, uh Shane Marks, The Revelation. Great, great stuff, gentlemen. I wish you guys could have been there. Uh, it was a heck of a night, and Mason cheated. That's all I'm saying, and that's common knowledge. Well, you can actually laugh if you want to. I had a night off, and I did I'm sure you enjoyed that, too. Yeah, it's actually my first night off since I got back in from vacation, so you know that I w- took that three-week stretch and just... Well, you know, next week, you won't have the night off. Next week, you got to put it with me, so... Hey, bring it on, dude. Look. Uh, no, because I'm not going to be hurt with a vasectomy this time. <laughs> I feel sorry for Pell City. I'm telling you right now, you can laugh all you want to. You heard how I was, and I was drugged up on commentary, and I think I brought out the best in you and Ted, so you're welcome with that. We had a great... I mean, I can... But say- this- but this tag team, no, no, you shut your mouth for a second. This Saturday, I'm not going to be get commentary with you guys. You guys, I'm sorry for messing up your jail because it was obvious. You know, we were all trying to talk to each other. I had great laughs. It was great to be there with you guys. I want to thank you for that. But I'm going to have to take all of that time off and throw it in Pell City's face. So, Pell City, if you're listening to Unlucky Charms versus your new GCW tag team champions, Maybo, you'll like this. Trevor, Doom, Ian, and Joey Lightning. Joey Wimpy Lightning, because he looks like Wimpy. He'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger, hamburger today. today. And that's the truth. I told Joey, Joey's like, hey, man, you want to give me any pointers? I swear to you. And you can ask Joey Lightning. May, may Lightning strike me dead. First, first thing I thought was, Joey, lose some weight. And he's going to lose that weight. And then he's going to gain those beautiful cowboy boots. I cannot tell you guys. You know, the pop of the night was Damon Christopher's cowboy boots backstage. They were phenomenal. An early Christmas present from his beautiful wife, Misty. Those cowboy boots may be jammed down somebody's throat. And on top of that, you guys know Christopher Knox defended his bare-knuckle brawling championship in South Carolina this past Saturday. He was unable to be at UIW. Mabo, I promise you this. I know you're not a fan of Joey Lightning. Dr. Doom and Black Bolt, <laughs> I, want you, I want you guys to meet the real Thunderbolts. Because I'm telling you right now, they're going to pummel their way through them. I'm telling you right now. The, Mar- the, Mar- the False Face Society, the Marvel Zombies, and every single one of the Legion of Doom have got nothing on the Unlucky Charms. I'm telling you guys right now, I'm going to rear back, and if Joey Lightning gets anywhere around me, I'm going to take my black, because I'm going to have the Black Lantern ring. Believe that. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it down his freaking throat. And then when we take those titles, and those titles are going to be held to prestige once again, the world is going to be a bowl of beans and unlucky charms hands. Shamrocks and shenanigans, people. I'm telling you guys right now. Eddie? Yes? I know you got GCW radio tonight, sir. Okay. Who is your guest tonight? Still working on that concept. And actually, it may be put on hold till Tuesday night. So you're running scared, too. As the commissioner... As oh. the commissioner of GCW. Are you the commissioner? Are we playing commissioner right now? Are we playing? We play, let's play. Let's rock it uh, Since you're GCW commissioner, I want you to send a message to your little uh, your little tag team. They're not fit to be the face of GCW tag team division. They are great. Trevor Doom Eon needs to be on his own. In fact, I think he'd make a hell of a merchant of death. I'm just saying. Just saying. I don't think they trust each other. I watched their match. For them to beat Mudbone and Aiden Solo was a miracle. Some people think it's going to be a, take a miracle for us because as everybody knows that Peter Gabriel, that Irish sledgehammer that Chris Knox brings, yes, it's called the Peter Gabriel. We all saw what it did to Shane Fox. It will take their heads off. 
this will actually do something that Joey Lightning has tried his entire life to do. It's going to straighten his hair. No additives, preservatives, or berries needed, Joey. No cocoa butter. You know that straight hair you always longed for? We're about to give it to you. I'm telling you guys right now, I, I may both. I know you have your disagreements with, with GCW, but I'm telling you, you and Tunzi might want to be there for this. This is going to get ugly. And I'm just, I'm just going to say this. There may not be enough of Trevor and enough of Black Bolt, <laughs> Joey Lightning, to fit into a matchbox. But let me reassure all of you. Let me reassure everybody out there. We're damn sure going to try. Now, if I may, number one, I've had a chance to survey this. Oh, don't be on me. Don't be on me. Okay, that somewhere else. I've had a chance to survey the situation. Crap, and from... Yeah, I don't know. That'll be a new segment. Some people are into that. Some, that's some people say it's not my thing. So some people are into that. Okay. Well, I've had a chance to really study. Joey Lightning and Trevor Eon don't have issues. They are a great cohesive tag team unit. Great, great's a little overused. They're pretty good. Okay. Uh, I, I think Trevor Doom Eon. I think carries Joey. I really do. Okay. And that's a, that's a heavy accomplishment. Have you seen Joey? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. Like no. Wicked. Oh, shot. Was, hey, I'm sorry. hey. Sorry. We're playing. I'm sorry. I backed away. Your turn. <laughs> Heal out in a second. <laughs> Damn it. I've also had a chance to observe the unlucky charms. Chris Knox, Damon Christopher. Two very talented competitors. And you throw yourself into the mix. That makes them that much more dangerous. That does give the unlucky charms a huge advantage. I've watched you manage in four different states. I have watched you survey, study, and I've watched you physically interject yourself into a situation on more than one occasion. Relegate that status to Christmas, dude, and this is still November. Christmas comes in July. Christmas comes in December. We don't need an additional Christmas present in November. The straight shoot about this is Full Throttle, The Unlucky Charms in Pell City, Alabama. Saturday night, November the 17th, under the banner of Global Championship Wrestling with the tag team titles on the line. This match in and of itself can headline anywhere around the southeastern United States and um, two-thirds of the way up the eastern seaboard. We'll conquer the west coast later. It's going to fall off into the ocean anyway. Who cares? I'm kidding, guys. But I will say this. As commissioner of Global Championship Wrestling, I will be watching you. Now, the decision of the referee in the ring is final. But, friendship and professional aside, you get involved, I'll have you ejected. Do we have an accord? Do we have an understanding? Well, let me say this. Let me tell you this right now. <laughs> <laughs> if Mabel and Tunzi are not there, when we win the titles, it will mean nothing. You have to be there, Mabel. You have to be there. Uh, but seriously, I like Joey. Joey is a hell of a talent. He took a lot of time off. And yes, you guys know this. I... As a real manager, I see it as my duty to be out there and make sure I, I scout my opponents. Joey Lightning was stuck in a car with a Ryan Bishop, Johnny Slaughter, Corey Hollis, myself, and sometimes Christian Hayne when Christian Hayne wasn't too scared to ride with us. And occasionally Mike Posey. Uh, Joey has seen me go crazy. Joey has seen me fight a guy and beat up a guy at, uh, I think, Statue of Limitations over that, I, I think. Uh, beat up a guy 
and a jack in the box. Joey knows how mean I can be. You take Damon Christopher Common Knowledge and the primal Chris Knox, you have the subconscious samurai, and then Mr. Terminal Intent, Chris Knox. I mean, as many cliches as we throw around, you're talking about a man going on 16 years in the business. Let me say that again. Damon Christopher, this upcoming year, will be 16 years in the business. This isn't somebody that I've, I have I just found because you guys know I've been known to find somebody you know, and help them rise up as I should. Because I promise you this, you could give me a guy in a clown outfit. And I promise you this, he will be a creepy clown. And I promise you it will be nothing. Doink will have Jack Poo Poo on any kind of clown I'm dealing with. And that's a shoot. But plain and simple, Joey knows what I'm capable of. Everybody on the western side of Georgia, everybody throughout Tennessee, throughout Mississippi, throughout Florida, and all of Alabama, knows Damon Christopher as another name that shall not be mentioned here. Last night, I promise you this, Universal Independent Wrestling, when he took his mask off, his death mask off, and revealed to everybody who Common Knowledge was, there were people that literally started tearing up. I swear to you. People, and you know, with him! They were just like, like I had corrupted him. All I've done is I've just let Damon Christopher be himself because people have no idea, was Damon Christopher in a little part of the old Damon or is still that charismatic, chauvinistic Damon of another name in this incantation of Damon Christopher? You never know, but you've got to come out. Joey knows Trevor Doom Eon who has the second greatest name besides my own because I love somebody that's a huge Dr. Doom fan. Dr. Doom, second greatest villain of all time behind Venom. I'm sorry, the Joker. Venom story. But, with all this going on, there's no way these guys win. And you know, Eddie, how many times legitimately have I even interfered? Legitimately. How many times have I interfered in a match this entire year? And I want you to be straightforward with this six three times two of them were in Nashville during Kyle Michael Pandora's first women's title match one other time I don't have to I don't have to interfere that's not my job my job isn't to go out there you know who valets interfere quite often uh, I see it all the time you know guys will start to come over there to me and I'll stand there that's not, my job is to make sure my guys are focused in the ring and to point out the weaknesses and to see what I see as the weaknesses they may not see. That's my job. I am almost a UFC coach, a boxing a corner man. That's how I see myself. People just happen to hate me. And that's kudos because people pay to see my guys get beat up. I'm telling you guys right now, you guys know this, and everybody listening live on Ustream, listening on the podcast, on the rebroadcast, on the YouTube, I challenge you. I challenge any wrestling fan out there to go and see my work, to go and see what I do, to go and see what Damon Christopher does, to go and see what Chris Knox does, and point to somebody that cannot stand in the ring toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I promise you, these guys will go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, top to bottom with anybody in this industry. <laughs> Joey Lightning, a hell of a talent. Trevor Doom, a hell of a talent. But they're not the unlucky charms. They're not affiliated with the Merchants of Death. Damon Christopher, Chris Knox are. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be a knockdown drag out. You better get ready, Eddie, and tell everybody to get half of one of those GCW, those great TV shows that outdraw Ring of Honor. <laughs> you better take half of that show and, and just go ahead and slot it up for this match because this match is going to go for about 30 or 45 minutes. They don't want to give up the titles. We're going to take the titles. Difficult takes a day, impossible takes a week. I'm done. Sorry. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a hell of a night. It's going to be a great show in the main event that evening. I should say co-main event because the tag title should be, I'm, I'm going to say co-main event. Because in the main event, yes. GCW, oh, GCW Championship on the line, Global Championship Wrestling title will be defended. 
Micah Taylor will be defending against O'Hagan. O'Hagan gets his rematch. Now, there's a lot of speculation going on about this match, and believe me, we're going to talk about it a little bit later on GCW Radio. Um, Global Championship Wrestling GCW Radio will be broadcast a little bit later this evening. If not tonight, I'll keep everybody posted on GCW's face, um, Facebook fan page, facebook.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling. Um, if we do not go live tonight, we'll go live on Tuesday night at 9 o'clock Central, excuse me, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. But, like I said, mark your calendars, make your plans. The Unlucky Charms, managed by the Wicked Nemesis, which you say valets interfere. Does that mean J.J. Dillon and Valet or Gary Hart? Hmm. Well, or Jim Cornette. We'll talk about that later. From that, they managed- didn't interfere too much. Now they didn't interfere too much. You interfere one time, that's okay. But if you continuously do it, man, I mean, it's just it's kicking a down dog. I don't know how you feel about it. That's how I feel about it. You guys, you know, have seen a lot more wrestling than I have because you guys are older than me. Of course, not by much. I didn't know that. I always thought I was older than Mabo. Mabo, how's your hair coming? You have beautiful hair. Uh it's. Still growing. I haven't. I haven't cut it yet. I know I said I was going to cut it at the two-year mark in October, but uh, that didn't happen. And, why are uh, you growing it? First of all, why are you growing it, sir? For those that have you know just joined, maybe new listeners to the show. Um, because I'm too poor and too lazy to go get a haircut. But it, that eventually evolved into I am going uh, growing it out, and eventually will brush it. And uh, <laughs> when it's the appropriate length, which it should be. Sounds like my first time that I will uh, get in contact with Locks of Love or For Love or whatever it is, and uh, they will, yeah, you know, will, it will be cut and sent off and cleaned and straightened, and all the split ends will be picked out, and it will be made into a hairpiece for little kids who are, um, you know, suffering, uh, you know, suffering. They're living living with cancer, and you know, they might be going through the chemo and they might not have hair, so they will get to have. Beautiful, luscious hair that looks like mine. There you go. And and for the thirteen year old that's gonna have the greatest salt and pepper hair since Sam Elliott, kudos to you. There you go. Um before we before we start putting a wrap on everything, because I know Wick, you said you've got a run in three and a half. I'm gonna go um I wanna say on behalf of all of us, um to all of those who have served in our armed forces, you are appreciated. To all of our veterans you are very appreciated to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. The words thank you can never be enough. Um, as we hit Veterans Day, you know, everybody's been saying it and we weigh in, in, in our own inimitable fashion for various reasons. Um, it's longtime listeners will know the fact that my father is a Marine who served two terms in Korea, tours of Korea, I should say, and was very instrumental in me learning a lot about growing up in a lot of different ways and I owe my father a debt that I can never repay Um, for those who've been catching up recently my father has just completed his second week of radiation treatments for cancer and he's also dealing with a situation where his back has been wrenched Um, my father will see better days and we're going to get him through this I will be standing by his side um, not just because he is my father, but because I love him, I respect him, I appreciate him, I admire him, and I will be there for him because he is the leader of the entire cotillion, and that's the easy way that I can say it. My father, like I said, retired Marine. I wish I, I one of these days I'll probably be one quarter of the man that he has always been because I know I'll never be half the man that he is even right now at 82 years of age. But, Dad... We'll get you through this. And like I said, brighter days are on the horizon. Gentlemen, care to weigh in, Mabo? On what? Veterans Day. Uh, Yeah. Rock on, veteran peoples. (laughs) (laughs) Wicked. You you honestly, you sit there and you... (laughs) You bring down the room, go on this heartfelt rant, and then you're like, man, well, you care to weigh in? Yeah, make me look like the ass, man. Come on, what the hell, dude? Because <laughs> we all know the next thing that's gonna that I'm going to end up saying is going to involve a penis, an anus, diarrhea, <laughs> masturbation, animal sex, <laughs> something, and then you're just like, you know, this heartfelt just, you know, just rant about your father and how much you love him and respect him and everything and then you're like hey monkey boy want to say something 
No. Rip off a tender moment like that? What the hell? It would have been just as easy for you to sit back and say, yes, I'd also like to say thank you to all the veterans who have served um, served our country in the military. <laughs> no. Look, just we got to get Wicked out of here. He's, he's got to go take care of business. So. Wicked, shameless plugs. Uh, the To Be Determined show this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we're actually going to have Wolfie D from PG-13 on, so that's going to be very controversial. I know Beyond Ringside is PG, and we are X-rated pretty much over there. And if we could show our penises on webcam, I'm sure that one of us probably already would have, who's no longer with the show. Namely but you. at Wicked Nemesis, at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter, uh, Wicked Nemesis Enoch, I think. Well, they let me change my name, so I think it's Wicked Nemesis now on YouTube. Go out and check out past shows of the To Be Determined show with Shoot Finish and, of course, Beyond Ringside. Thank you guys for having me on. Thank you for all the listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, this Saturday, GCW Pell City. Thank you all. Take care, Wick. We'll see you. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tasha Simone has a penis? By the she's way, she's still with the show. She's still with the show. But by the way, I do have to say this because you gave me credit and the copyright credit as well. Damn it, Wick. Okay, there I said. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Have a good night. Peace, Mabo. Last call. Wait, last call or shameless plug? Last call. Oh shoot, man! I don't know. I had something. I forgot. Did it have anything to do with the penis, erectum, anal sex? Uh... No. Wow. I wouldn't mind some Buffalo Wild Wings, though, but I'm broke. Come and see me on Thursday. I'll buy you some damn wings. I'll have money by Thursday, fool. I'm talking about now. I'm hungry. Well, unfortunately, I can't go anywhere. I'm supposed to do another show at 9. Yeah, but you said you might not do it. I haven't decided yet. I, I'm not going to drive all the way out there. Um, I don't know. What have, we, have we covered everything, really? We've covered a lot of different things. Is there another topic you want to hit on real quick? Oh, well, that's what I'm asking you. Inspire me. Be my muse. <laughs> Where's Olivia Newton-John when I need her? Thank you, Xanadu. Uh, Xanadu! I don't know, dude. What, 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 what else has happened? Mabo just got another gold star on his Players Club card for doing that. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, you I said you haven't watched... some Xanadu. Trust me. Olivia Newton-John has been, back in the day, back in the, the, the younger, way younger Mabo days, when he first discovered his penis, she was, she was, part, of the, she was part of the Spank Bank collection. There you go. Um, let's see. You said you didn't watch. Um, Ring of Honor is the only one I hadn't really watched, and we kind of touched last week on Ring of Honor kind of going crappy. But what else is going no, on? No, last week's episode of Ring of Honor was probably one of the best ones that they've had, and this week was actually almost just as good. And what's funny as hell is, remember last week on Beyond Ringside, I brought up the question, what in the hell happened to the fact that ROH has a television title? And lo and behold, what gets fo- what gets featured this week on freaking ROH TV? I don't know, Eddie. I haven't watched it, remember? We that would be that three seconds ago. That would be the ROH television champion Adam Cole in a match this week. Yeah, but Adam Cole is up. And I hate to say this, and I really but do, don't. and I, I'm going to draw some serious heat from the hardy heads and the rest of the drug doers out there who just really just think that this guy is all that. Hey, 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 Jeff Hardy is clean. Matt. Oh, Lord Jesus. Look, I know Can you're trying not, to set no, something. I no, know. Th- no, what? No, no, we're not going to talk about Matt Hardy. If, if there's certain people and certain subjects we can't talk about on this show with you and Wicked, then we're not talking about Matt Hardy. The promo nope. sucked. No, 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 no. Devote the television no, no, time. No, 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 no. Now, let me say this. Devote the television time to somebody who deserves it, please. That's all I'm going to say. And if you're going to try to bank the farm on this one particular setup, you're just sending the farm straight into bankruptcy. Plain and simple. I would like to find out who ROH is going to be using for the trouble, uh, troubleshooting enforcer that Jim Cornette said he just found out the name of. And he was supposed to be the one who was appointing him. God, talk about a conflict there. But then by the same token, you know something? It really wouldn't surprise me. I've thought about this very deeply over the last couple of weeks. It's Vince McMahon. No, it wouldn't surprise me if Adam Pierce came in as the it's trouble as the infor- as the uh, troubleshooting matchmaker on Ring of Honor. It's Stone Cold. I would like to see Adam Pierce 
on okay. Ring of Honor. Back on Ring of Honor. Um, I Personally, I'd like to see Pierce in WWE, but by the same token, I don't know if his style would mesh with the E style. I think Pierce is a character all his own. Um, I think he would be the one, I, one of the ones who could do like CM Punk and transcend the E style if they let him. But then by the same token, they've taken other greats from the independent scene and have totally botched it. Um, they've got it right every once in a while, but not often enough. I really think the best one that they've come up with that they've really brought into the mainstream picture has been Damian Sandow. I liked his character from the time that he stepped on screen for the first vignette um, all the way to right now with the, the Rhodes Scholars. If they think that Sandow needs Rhodes, they're sadly mistaken. If they think that Rhodes is benefited by the presence of Sandow, you're damn right. Plain and simple. Well, you got to remember, though, dude, they, it's, Sandow has been on and off with WWE for since, since OVW. I know. I mean, and he actually he made it at one point. When, uh, uh, when, when, believe it or not, back when Michelle McCool first uh, broke onto the scene, and she was doing it was the whole teachers' pets gimmicks. It was Idol Aaron. The, actually, they didn't even call him Aaron the Idol Stevens. They just called him Idol Stevens, and right. uh, I believe it was Casey James. Um, you know, he was there, and you know, then they got let go, and he was in OVW for a while, and then he got let go like period and then he ended up in FCW and I think he might have actually got let go at FCW and then he was eventually brought back as Damian Sandow but he wasn't it wasn't even the Damian Sandow that we, we know he didn't they didn't even they, they they didn't stick him with that gimmick until about a year or so ago I where, like it it's working oh I mean don't get me wrong I believe it is I, I, I think you know it's definitely you know like they, you know, playing it, and they've tweaked it because originally I think he was supposed to be, uh, you know, it was supposed to be more of a master thespian kind of thing, almost like, Acting. almost but, like uh, Oscar worthy. Oh, one of the, I would put that in one of the top five best Beyond Ringside interviews ever. But uh, yeah, it was. I think he was originally supposed to go for this. Ma- I think it was more of a master thespian kind of feel, and now he's going for more of a. You know, intellectual, but I mean, they had him. Uh, I mean, even before he grew that that luscious beard, you know, they believe it or not, they had him tagging with Titus O'Neil. Yeah, it's just you know your generic just meat and potatoes, you know, babyface team. Yeah. So I mean, you know, when you sat there and said that they, you know, that they pulled from the independents, yeah, this they he's he's been around, dude. Well, like not not really so much the independence more as he's probably spent more time under the under the umbrella of the WWE honing his craft and everything and and he benefits from having that beard because I've seen him without that beard and it's just like his it, it just his face stops his face stops existing after his lower lip <laughs> so the fact that he grew that beard in it's, it's a lot better and Xanadu there you go. Can can you know what? Can, can you know what? When when uh, you know front office GCW, um, the next time you guys have somebody come in, can just for no reason, can you slap them with a the gimmick of Xanadu? How would but, you do it? I don't. Uh, roller disco, seventies roller disco. Hmm. Duh. Have them come to the ring with roller skates and you know sparkly jumpsuit. You know. Oh, Eddie. Yeah. Remember X Men Dazzler? Yeah, very well. Hold on. Here you go. There. That's all we can play because if not, we have to pay for it. <laughs> there you um, go. Um, but okay, I'm not talking about eight, 80s into the 90s Dazzler where she had the blue outfit. Right. And man, I'm talking about like 70s Dazzler where she actually had the disco ball on. A chain around her neck. I'm thinking that. Hmm. I'm um, somehow we can get a you know somebody call Adam Roberts and get him to sew a pair of tights like that. That could work. Anyway, have him come to the ring, 
two Xanadu on a pair of roller skates. Well, hell, we've done everything else. <laughs> they, they don't. They don't have to. They don't have to wrestle in the roller skates. That's just dangerous. There you go. But I just want somebody to come to the ring in a Xanadu in a, in a Dazzler Xanadu disco roller skate outfit, and I want them to come down to the ring to Xanadu. And I want to see anybody under the age of 25. The look on their face. Yeah, the look on their face and their heads just pop. Just their heads explode. They're just like, we cannot wrap our minds around this. What is going on? Be like scanners. <laughs> oh, it will be like scanners. It'll be so awesome. Head explode. Dan Sawyer, you're welcome. There you go. I just, I just gave you a million dollar gimmick. You're Yo. welcome. <laughs> and in return, he'll say... Hey, Mabo, shameless plugs. No, exactly. You know what he'll say? He'll be like, Mabo. You forgot to say Palmerdale. Well, he had, he, he, he had, oh, God, why are y'all still in Palmerdale? Why? I mean, it looks horrible on TV. I was, you know what? You know what? This is not GCW radio, so I'm going to shoot straight on this. Whenever I do actually not fast forward to the matches, because um, I only watch for, like, you or Wicked or, you know, somebody decent. Which you've had means, fun the last two weeks with us doing commentary. Not really. I usually just... It depends on who's in the match. But, uh, seriously, Palmerdale, really? I mean, come on. It, it looks horrible. I liked it better when you... What was it? The A&E Fun, fun Center, Center and Jasper? Yeah, I know I like that place for television. I still want somebody to do a, a shooting star press off of one of the big inflatables. But, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, Daryl was making a reference in the chat room a minute ago that Sandow still reminds him of the genius, and I agree with that 110%. I think that... Oh, he's better than the genius, though. Nah, I think Papa was a little bit more creative. Nah, I don't know. Look, just because Papa could write Dr. Seuss-style poems in his brain, you know, I mean, and half the time, you know he sat there and rehearsed them. Dude, seriously, white man fro, scary mustache, come on. Okay. And then when he started dressing like the freaking, like he was at a graduation. What the crap? Yeah. It's still funny, though. Yeah, it was. Let's go and run it. Shameless plugs. And now he's working, and now he's selling gazelle. But, uh, shameless plugs. Um, you can find me at the tweeter, tweeters on the. With the M-A underscore B-O and the Facebook with the Mark Bowman. I don't know why I give this up. Nobody follows me. Nobody, con- nobody you know, friends me on Facebook. And you know what? That's fine. I don't care. I don't need you guys sending me... Oh, Velvet Sky. Um, I don't need you guys sending me freaking stupid requests for stupid games or, you know, your retarded tweets. So, you know what? Don't contact me. And, uh... You know, and you know, there's other stuff that I do try to promote, like Bevner and all that. But I'm going to forego all of that, in in promoting uh, something that uh, it's kind of. There's an event coming up. Uh, put on, it's a benefit show. Uh, put on by Dutch Mantel. It's the uh, Amelia Keown Memorial Fund, and it's going to be Sunday, November 18th, uh, in Murphy in Murfreeze, Borough, Tennessee. Yep, that's next weekend. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dutch Mantel, um, uh, Amelia Keown was Dutch Mantel's granddaughter, and she was killed in an, a horrible, tragic car accident uh, a couple months back. And Dutch has been on a rampage um, trying to get all these bills and legislations passed, get in contact with you know the 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 governing body in Tennessee or what have you, because the gentleman. And it's 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 a, it's a horrible horrible tragedy what happened, um, and I do encourage you guys to uh, go to his Facebook page and just read back through all the other stuff um, about exactly what he's doing, what they're what they're trying to do, because the the gentleman who was driving the car that sh- that struck his granddaughter uh, was first of all shouldn't have even been I, I believe he may have been intoxicated, uh, I'm not quite sure. But I do know that he uh, shouldn't have even been licensed. Uh, he shouldn't have even been driving. He should have driving. He shouldn't have had a, a license or anything. He was uh, um, had been let go several times. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I know I'm not doing it justice because 
you know, I don't have everything in front of me right now because, you know, scrolling through the whole entire page. But it, it was, the guy should have never been, he should have stayed in jail. That's where basically the point is, is he should have been in jail. And, uh, you know, it was a tragedy what happened. It's, you know, they say a parent should never have to bear their own child. Well, a, a grandparent should definitely never have to bury their grandchild. And it was it was terrible. The kid, I don't even think she was out of high school. I think she was still in her senior year. But it was terrible. But he's he's putting on a benefit show. Um, like I said, it's the Amelia Keown Memorial Fund. It's going to be in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee on, on the 18th next weekend. starts at 6 p.m. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the names that are going to be appearing, uh, TNA's James Storm. Uh, uh, for those who remember Crimson, Tommy Mercer, uh, he's he's going to be there. Primetime Brian Lee, name that ha- I hadn't heard in a couple years, but uh, he'll be there. Um, guest on uh, to uh, to be determined coming up, uh, like Wicked mentioned earlier, Wolfie D. Eddie, a name you're familiar with, uh, Jof- Josephus Brody. Right. He'll be there, and Aubriella. Yep. Uh, a name. I've heard. I don't think I've ever. I don't know if I've ever seen him, but I've heard the name Jeremiah Plunkett, uh, Lee Condry, Kerry Awful, Ricky Morton's going to be at the show. Um, it's going to be eight matches. There's going to be a battle royal. There's going to be raffles. Um, Duchess said there, you know, might be a few surprise appearances. You know, it just depends. Um, tickets only uh, ten dollars, and I believe kids. I'm not sure the age limit. I don't see it listed. That's what I'm looking for. So if I feel like I'm you know, vamping I am. Uh, but, uh, oh, Rudy Charles is going to be there, too. Yep. Uh, Diane Von Hoffman, that name sounds familiar. Okay. Um, but uh, tickets, uh, I, I don't know adults are 10, uh, kids are 7, not quite sure the age limit on the kids. Uh, but it's going to be at 1018 Seals Way in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, of course, you can go to Dutch's website to check it out. You know, get all the details. It's www.dutch, Dutch, D-U-T-C-H, Mantel, 2 lscom Go check it out. If you're in the area, go up there, uh, support, you know, just try to show you support because, you know, it's it's hit Dutch's family hard, this this whole tragedy. So you know, try to help them out. Do what you can. Cool. Are you gonna throw back over my way? Actually, I was trying. I was still reading. I, there was a picture of a chick in a bikini. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, as Daddy Lane, shameless plugs. First off, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been joining us on the Beyond Ringside twenty four seven channel. It is back up. Thank you to everybody over at our service um, that we use who has been hosting us for um, the last few months, and we've got everything back up and going full steam. So recent episodes and interviews are definitely available 24-7 through beyondringside.com. Just click that little JW player, and it will come on through. Plus, you can also catch it by... So does, I'm surprised Mabo didn't jump in when I said the term catch it and put the dramatic pause for effect in there um, from that vantage point. <coughs> You can also download the Shoutcast app and find Beyond Ringside 24-7 through the Shoutcast radio network. And on your computer, you get, that means you can also listen to everything from Winamp, Windows Media Player, iTunes, um, QuickTime, all of the above. There's more ways to listen than I've got active brain cells. Um, recent episodes and interviews are also available for download and listening through iTunes. Just look for Beyond Ringside. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody over the last few weeks who has reminded me that, yes, some of our archives are still up through the old blog talk radio shows that we did to, um, I think it was half of year one and most of year two. So those are still up. Those archives are still very available. I'd love to be able to get my hands on those. But the following... Is that, is that the one that had the little British lady that would be like, your yes. radio show will be good in five minutes. Yes, that one, yes. Back when, so back when we were simulcasting through all the different ways we were doing it. Um, oh, got that one right. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, you did. I was, no, I was reading uh, spoilers. Ah. Or not spoilers results from Turning Point. Lay them out there. Oh, no, no, you go finish. You're doing your thing. Okay. You can find us on Twitter at Beyond Ringside. One word, run it all together. It is that easy. Also, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. 
If you have live events upcoming, wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, sporting events coming up in the near future, drop us an email, beyondringside at gmail, um, gmail.com. That's beyondringside at gmail.com. You can also send us a Facebook message or send us a direct message over on Twitter. Um, there's a ton of people who need to check their passwords because over the last few days I've gotten a lot of strays from people that I know that their accounts have been hacked. So, folks, if you're on Twitter, check your password because a whole bunch of people are getting direct messages from your hacked Twitter accounts. And I'm not talking about Kurt Angle drunk on a Saturday night, allegedly. From that point, um, thank you to everybody who has been downloading the podcast edition, the replays, and catching us through there. Um, of course, beyond ringside.podomatic, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C.com. Um, we also put the links up on our social network as well to recent episodes. And like I said, you can download through iTunes. We make it just that easy. For, you're on a personal note. Um, Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane is the easy way to find me. I do not always approve everybody who sends me a friend request. It's my page. It's my choice. However, Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane, I put a lot of the same updates, plus some exclusives over on my Facebook fan page, um, as opposed to my my friends page, which I'm not going to mention because that's my personal account. Nyeh. Also on Twitter, at Fast Eddie Lane, easy to find. Um, one word, run it all together. No hyphens, underscores, spaces, or any of the other crap. Um, also, the return of FastStudyLane.com is imminent, um, slowly but surely. And I'm going to be adding things on a daily basis. Um, classic pictures, videos, interviews, stuff that I've done over the years. Um, thank you to everybody who's been very supportive and very patient about the return of the personal site. Um, things have been taken um, into play and it will be around for a long time to come probably a lot longer than me so huh, we'll leave it at that so it's a lot of things going on also we are working to try to set up for the next couple of weeks we've got some great interviews that we are in negotiations with um, just trying to nail down the times and everything and really looking forward to bringing on some um, in addition to some returning guests um, we've got some voices and some faces that are going to be brand new to Beyond Ringside, and we're greatly looking forward to having those on as well. So definitely keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com. Uh, real quick on personal notes, this coming Thursday night for my friends in Central Alabama, I will be at Buffalo Wild Wings up in Trustville, Alabama, uh, kicking things off around 9 o'clock p.m. Buffalo Wild Wings Alabaster, the Friday night tradition, 10 o'clock p.m. start. That may be changing in the near future. We may bump it forward to 9. We're not quite sure yet. Also, this coming Saturday, you heard Wicked and I talk about it in, um, in passing. Global Championship Wrestling making their return to Pell City, Alabama. It's a November to remember. Tag Team Gold on the line as the Unlucky Charms. Chris Knox and Damon Christopher challenge the combination of Full Throttle, Trevor Eon, and Joey Lightning. And, of course, I would be remiss and probably under a death threat if I did not mention, of course, and remind everybody of the fact that the Unlucky Charms are a division of the Merchants of Death managed by our tag team partner here on BR, the Wicked Nemesis. Um, keep your eyes open. Got a lot of great things going on for the Global Championship Wrestling event this coming Saturday night, November 17th in Pell City. Tickets are only $10 apiece. Bell time is set for 7.30 p.m. Check out GCW Pro. Dot com for all upcoming show information. They're also on Facebook and Twitter, but also we may have a radio show coming up later tonight for GCW. We're just working on final details right now. It may be pushed back to Tuesday night. I'm not sure yet. Folks, we're going to go and hit the little button over here, and we're going to get ready to take it to the broadcast ranch. Today was a lot of fun. I really didn't expect us to go the full two and a half hours. By golly, we almost made it. Missed it by six. I figured we'd be done by seven o'clock after predictions. <laughs> to Wicked Nemesis, of course. Pleasure, brother. I will see you this coming Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Central, on the To Be Determined show. Looking forward to it. Daryl, thank you for dropping in the chat room this evening. Stan, Air, thank you all both for dropping through the chats this evening. Uh, to everybody who made it through the Ustream chat site, yes, the Ustream chat is still very much available. And every once in a while, I'm only running, I only have one full-scale mic set up, and it's a hard-set microphone. I don't have my secondary mic set up, so I haven't had a chance to spin around and look as much as I'd like to. But you are appreciated, and we thank you so much. Um, Stan Grubb, of course, one of the co-hosts of this very rink. And like I said, this coming Wednesday, I will be making a very private and personal guest shot over on the To Be Determined show. Let's take it home for the Oracle of Amos, the Wicked Nemesis. 
uh, for Beyond Ringside alumni, the Horseman's Advocate Andy Hudson. Always great to talk to you, buddy. And for Mark Mabo Bowman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. Or, no, not spoilers. Results. Uh, Samoa Joe won, and Eric Young showed up, and ODB and Eric Young won. And Scary that's thought. Huh? Scary thought. <laughs> But that's that's all I've got right now. Okay. Brother, I appreciate you. Thank you for everything. You, I, it means more than you know. Once again, why do you keep trying to put me in these difficult, I don't do the mushy. Wasn't being mushy, dipshit. I was actually just being sincere. Ooh, you just cuss on the air. F and A right. (laughs) You thought I was going in one direction. I was just saying thank you. Well, yeah, but then you had that like long, awkward pause, and now everybody's like... I was shutting up and waiting for you to say something. Back. I was shutting up and waiting. Until next time, this is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane saying adios. To no, 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 no. You're not going to host the lasagna and all that stuff. No, we're going to resolve this right now. <laughs> Bring it on. You're sitting there getting all emotional and saying thank I'm not you emotional. and all that stuff. And then, you, and then you're just like, leave it blank, and I'm just like... Uh, and everybody that's listening is like, that guy's an asshole. And he pours his heart out twice in the show. And then he just like, never doesn't say anything. I mean, I don't mind being made to look like an asshole, but still. I'm the one know. who normally is. But you're all like, not, I'm trying to I'm trying to get laid, laid off this show, man. And if the lady's sitting there going, he don't respond, then they don't think I ain't going to get no sloppy boppy. It'd be, well, you can come across as the bad boy. And come across giggity giggity ah! for Mark Mabo Bowman come across this is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane saying you know what the hell I was about to say until next time we'll see you next Sunday 5.30 Central 6.30 Eastern 3.30 Pacific right here on Beyond Ringside till next time bye for now <laughs>